Forget buried treasure, there are entire gold mines out there lost to history. Just one of them could fill hundreds if not thousands of treasure chests. This is our top 8 lost gold mines. Great, the lost Dutch oven mine. This mine is one of the most famous in California, and there are several versions of the story. But the best known is about Tom Schofield, a railroad worker who tried his hand at prospecting in his spare time. One day, while working in the Clipper Mountains northwest of Essex, he found an old stone house. It looked abandoned, and so he moved on. Several miles along from there, he found an old trail which he followed over a hill to a giant boulder split in two. The path continued through the boulder into what he believed was an ancient Spanish camp. When looking through the deserted camp, he found pieces of ore and an old rusted out Dutch oven. When he started to search the oven, it tipped over and a river of gold nuggets poured out. He filled his pockets with as much as he could carry and went back to town celebrating his good fortune with drinks all around. However, Schofield eventually ran out of gold and so returned to the Clipper Mountains to get more. But he could not find the trail, and although many have sought the mine unsuccessfully over the years, it is thought that as he gave enough of a detailed description, it could be found again. But honestly, if he couldn't find it again, I doubt you will. Number 7. The Lost Cement Mine The Lost Cement Mine is a legendary gold vein situated in the eastern Sierra Nevada in California. It was theoretically founded in 1857 by two men who were separated from their group while crossing the Sierra. They traveled near the headwaters of the Owen River and found some hardened igneous rock which was red in color and possibly contained large amounts of gold. Eventually, they found their way. One of the men kept the ore until 1860, when his friend fell ill with tuberculosis. Because his friend was a nice guy, he gave the ore and the location of its discovery to a Dr. Randall in payment for his friend's treatment. During this time period, the red igneous rock was known as cement in miners' parlance, hence the name of the lost mine. Dr. Randall and his assistant Gid Whitman spent years looking for the ore in the Pumice Hills to the south and west of Dead Man's Summit. News of the search leaked to the mining communities near Mono Lake, causing quite the commotion. Hordes of people searched for the spot, and even Mark Twain recalls the incident in his book Roughing It. James Wright wrote a series of newspaper articles about the search as well in 1879, speculating that the lost cement was actually found across the Sierra Crest, near Devil's Postpile. Wright claimed that the lost cement was mined for a number of years in secret, and then the mining cabin was destroyed to prevent others from finding the ore. Number 6. Lassiter's Reef Harold Bell Lassiter announced in both 1929 and 1930 that he had found a fabulously rich gold deposit in a remote, desolate corner of central Australia, although in each year he gave different accounts. The first account was that in either 1911 or 1879, no big deal, only a 32 year difference, he discovered a rich gold deposit. On October 14, 1929, he wrote a letter to Calgary Federal Member Albert Green, claiming to have discovered, quote, a vast gold bearing reef in central Australia 18 years earlier, and that it was located at the western edge of the McDonald Ranges. He made a similar claim to other officials and was interviewed by a commissioner and a geologist. The government took no action to investigate the claim. According to Lassiter, he spent the next three decades trying to raise sufficient interest to fund an expedition to the interior, but at the time, the fortunes being made from the gold crush at Calgary and West Australia deterred investors, and although the mine is still searched for today, it has yet to be discovered. Number 5. The Lost Blue Bucket Mine This one's reputed to be somewhere along the Meek Wagon Train Trail between the present-day cities of Vail and the Dales in Oregon. Its existence traces back to 1845, several years before the California Gold Rush. There are a few points which everybody agrees on. That lost Oregon-bound immigrants discovered it in 1845, and that the deposit is coarse placer gold in a dry stream bed or canyon, and that the canyon's bottom has numerous cavities and potholes created by a long-ago lava flow. A wagon train got lost off the meek cutoff of the Oregon Trail, near the Mahler River. Three young men went to fetch water, and while doing so, put some shiny rocks into a blue bucket, hence the title, Blue Bucket Mine. When they returned and the older members of the party said it was copper, they asked, was there much of it? One of the boys replied, we could have filled one of the blue buckets. As this was before the California Gold Rush, many did not recognize gold. When they got to where they were going, they discovered the shiny rocks were not copper, but gold. This legend sparked a gold rush to the area of modern-day Baker City, Oregon. To this day, its exact location is unknown, but we do know it comprises an area of approximately 40,000 square miles. It is believed to be on a tributary of the John Day River, and another version on a Bear Creek tributary of the Crooked River. If you want to learn more about this one, read the book, The Search for Oregon's Lost Blue Bucket Mines. Number 4. Swift Silver Mine Swift Silver Mine is fabled to have been discovered in 1760 by an Englishman named Jonathan Swift. 
somewhere between Pennsylvania and North Carolina. It is most commonly rumored to be located in eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, or Tennessee. In Jonathan Swift's journals, he records coming to Kentucky somewhere around 1760 on a series of mining expeditions. The journal recounts how a wounded bear led Swift to a vein of silver ore and a cave, and how he made annual treks back to the site of the mine carrying out silver bars and minted coins. An article in an 1886 Harper's Magazine tells how Swift supposedly buried a good deal of the treasure at various locations. The article says, quote, John Swift made silver in large quantities, bearing some $30,000 in crowns on a large creek, $15,000 a little way off near some trees, which were duly marked, and a prize of $6,000 close by the fork of a white oak, and $3,000 in the rocks of a rock house. It is said that later Swift ran into numerous obstacles, including Indian attacks and a mutiny by his crew, so he walled off the cave and discontinued his mining operation. Before he could return to the mine for himself, he was stricken blind. Settlers in Virginia believe that they know the location of the mine, and according to them, an Indian chief once said, If the pale face knew what we knew, they could shoe their horses cheaper with silver than with iron. Every year, there is a Swift Silver Mine Festival in the county seat of Campton, Kentucky, where locals believe the mine to be located near Swift Creek. Number 3. Pitt Lake The legendary Lost Mine, said to be near Pitt Lake, British Columbia, contains a supposed wealth so grand it has held the imaginations of people worldwide for more than a century. Ever since the years of the Fraser Canyon Gold Rush, prospectors and adventurers have been looking for the mine, and Gold Rush rumors have evolved into legends repeated and enriched over time. The mysterious riches are known as Slummock's Lost Mine, or Lost Creek Mine. In 1858, a number of maps were published in San Francisco, promoting the gold fields in British Columbia. Two of these maps show the word gold and, quote, Indian diggings in the country above Pitt Lake. Another map from that time shows the words much gold-bearing quartz rock on the north side of Pitt Lake, where a decade later, in 1869, an Indian brought, quote, a good prospect of gold which he states he found in a little stream on the north side of Pitt Lake to New Westminster. The report created great excitement in the city, and parties set out to find the Dickens. In 1903, a newspaper in New Westminster, B.C., reported that a man called George Moody had claimed to have found a rich placer deposit at Pitt Lake and had returned to town with $1,200 in coarse gold to prove it. In 1905, it was told that in 1902, an Indian had exchanged gold dust for 1600 in bills in Westminster. Several months later, he came back with 1800 in gold dust, and then a few days later, with 1400 in gold. He did not tell where he got it, and attempts to follow him failed. Then the Indian took sick, and after seeing a doctor was told he would soon die. So he told a relative the secret source of his gold, and described its location giving landmarks, and traced a crude map of the locality. After the Indian died, his relative, who had no money, sought the assistance of a white man. They were both unable to trace the spot where the Indian said he had found gold. With the secret now out, there have been expeditions every year in an attempt to locate the mysterious placer. As of yet, it has gone undiscovered. Number 2. The Lost Adam Diggins Adams, for whom the legend became known and whose first name has been forever lost to history, was journeying in his wagon from the state of New York to Tucson. His wagon was set afire by Apaches, but he managed to escape and drove a dozen horses towards Sacton, Arizona with the hope of selling them. At the same time, a party of 21 miners led by John Brewer were traveling together with a guide who promised to lead them to a valley of gold. He said, quote, I know a place where canyon walls cry tears of gold every day, and those tears are larger than your coins. The miners bargained with the guide, giving him a saddle, weapon, promised share of the gold. Unfortunately, they were in desperate need of horses. As if by fate, the lost Adams, with his new 12 head of horses, arrived just in time. The leader of the miners struck a deal. In trade for the horses, they would give him co-leadership of the group and a share of the gold. They followed the White River into the White Mountains and entered western New Mexico. The guide paused and pointed to two mountains that were shaped like sugar loaves. Quote, the gold canyon lies at the foot of those peaks, he said. The miners entered a canyon with a fantastic gold deposit through what was called the little door, which was so narrow it required the men to enter single file. Within a few days, the group collected a fortune of gold nuggets that they hid in a corn grinding basin left by ancient Native Americans. The young guide left the miners on the second night after the discovery and after he was paid, but before leaving, the guide issued a warning. He told the group not to stay long in the canyon, that it was a campsite for the Apache. 
The miners ignored the warning and continued to mine until they ran out of supplies. The party decided to send Brewer and five others to buy more supplies at Old Fort Wingate, west of modern Grants. Nine days after the provisions party did not return, Adams climbed out of the canyon to discover five bodies on the trail. Brewer was not among them. He raced back to camp, but it was too late. A large party of Indians had reached the camp and killed the remaining miners. Days later, Adam was found out of his mind and wandering the wilderness by military patrol. Upon recovery, Adam settled in California. When the Apache Wars ended, he led several expeditions to find the canyon and the basin filled with gold, but after many years of searching, his quest proved fruitless. Many books have been based on this legend, including Apache Gold and, Wa and Yoquai Silver, now in its ninth printing. Number 1. The Three Skeletons There once was a mining town known as Bear Town, and although obscure and nearly lost to time, the legend remains today. It was in La Plata County, Colorado, and the San Juan Mountains, and situated 10 miles southeast of Silverton. This little known mining district was at the head of Bear Creek, a small tributary of the Rio Grande River. The mines were clustered around Kite Lake, a small glacial pool located just below the Continental Divide. The mining camp that sprang up two miles downstream from the Dickens was known variously as Gold Run, Bear Creek, and Silvertip. Eventually, it came to be known as Bear Town. It was one of the most remote mining camps in the San Juans, so remote in fact that prospectors didn't even enter the area until 1893. When they finally got there, they discovered incredibly rich ore weighing in at over $4,000 a ton. A number of mines were developed in the area, including Sylvantine, Gold Bug, Silver Bug, and Good Hope. Bear Town was eventually established, but it was plagued by bandits, and although the veins were incredibly rich, they were small and tended to pinch out at depth. That combined with the high transportation costs and the fact that Timber Hill, just downstream from the camp, was a favorite ambush site for highwaymen, soon shuttered the budding town. It was completely abandoned by 1938. However, it was rediscovered in the early 1900s by a prospector who was wandering the area. He stumbled onto a mine portal by accident and discovered burlap sacks overflowing with ore. He also found three skeletons. He showed up in Durango in 1905 carrying, quote, a heavy bag filled with highly concentrated gold ore. He sold the ore and disappeared into the mountains, and he was never seen again. Thirteen years later, a Mexican prospector showed up in Durango carrying a satchel full of rich ore as well. He claimed to have found it in an abandoned mine shaft in the heart of the San Juans near the headwaters at Bear Creek. Unfortunately, before he could return to the mine, he died of pneumonia. Then, in 1938, a sheep herder appeared in Durango with yet another highly concentrated bag of gold ore. He reported the same story of the three skeletons. When he tried to return to the mine, he was unable to find it. The infamous three skeleton mine, or Bear Town, remains hidden to this day. So which mine are you going to track down? Comment down below. Thanks for watching guys. For more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. I'll be uploading new countdowns every Monday. Top 8 Studios is on Facebook and Google+. Twitter is coming soon. Thanks again.